Hi there, welcome to another video from Parker Adams Boat Sales. I'm Jonathan Parker and today we're here in Hamble Point Marina to look at this fantastic 2007 Sunseeker Manhattan 52. Now I've known this boat for quite a few years, I've known the owner and it's a brilliant, brilliant boat. So we're going to show you all the features and benefits this has to offer. Um, uniquely though, we're actually, because it's out the water, I can show you um, the underneath of it and the outside of the hull because I know all the things that has been done to this boat in the last few years. Um, from, fantastically, the, the hull a couple of years ago, the old antifoul was taken back and it was re-epoxied and fresh antifoul put on. So it's only got a couple of coats of antifoul on here from when it was re-epoxied. So it's really super smooth still. There's no breaks or anything like that. Fantastic. Um, it's got really powerful bow thruster as well. You can see, and just bear in mind, this is just fresh out the water. It only came out last week. I bought it here myself to Hamble Point Marine to be lifted out. And what I really, really like about this is this blue hull. If you look at the blue hull, it's like a mirror still. This is the end of the season. You know, this is the point where, you know, normally they're bloom, they're faded, they need work. But look at this hull, it's absolutely fantastic. And this is looked after by um, Destiny Marine here in Hamble Point. They looked after it last year and they're looking after it again over the winter today. But as you come down, you can see what a fantastic colour. Both sides are brilliant. It hasn't even had a clean, it's just literally been lifted out and put on the blocks and here we are filming it right now. Um, as you come down the back, if you have a look underneath, you can see it's actually on shaft drive. So these, um, so it's on a shaft drive, a really conventional, the cutlass bearings have been changed in the last couple of years, so there's no movement in these bearings at all. Um, the rudder um, bearings have also been replaced this last year as well, so there's no movement in the rudder at all. These are all things that will come up on surveys and with a boat of this age, they're due for these things to be done. But it's been done. If you come round to the back, the brilliant thing about the Manhattan 52 um, is this platform on the back. It's got a high-low hydraulic platform. And this whole section will drop down on big hydraulics, on these hydraulic arms. And there's even, look, a little step. So when it comes down, it comes down to about this level. So it goes into the water and you can use the steps which are either side to actually get yourself in and out. Um, also though, I don't know if you've spotted it, there's underwater lights. So we've got one, two, three, four, five underwater blue lights on this boat as well. And they work from a switch inside. And I don't know if you've spotted it as well, there's a stern thruster. So it's got a bow and stern thruster and it also has a wireless remote for, for the operation of them both. Um, but as you can see, again, it's just fantastic condition throughout this. I mean, it's due for an anti it's due for a bit of spit and polish, but actually it's fantastic on here from just being blasted off and put back in. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take you up. So we've got this scaffold in here. So we're going to go straight up. Okay, and then here we are now on top of the platform. And look at this, there's a massive jet ski on it. Now this is a big jet ski and, um, and it lifts it in and out easily um, on here. So normally you're very limited if you have a passerelle, you're very limited to the weights, normally up to 280 kilos, something like this. But the high-low platform is rated for a lot more. It has big rams on it. And in fact, you can put a Williams jet rib on here, you can put a jet ski on here. Um, this jet ski doesn't come with the boat, this is the owner's jet ski and it will be going with, um, with the new owner to his new boat. But as you can see, it's a fantastic size. And still, even though it's a big Yamaha ski on here, um, you can actually still get round the bathing platform. I can walk round behind it and I can walk to the other side. So you still get really good side access. And also still got good access to the rear lockers. So this has, again, the 52 has this additional rear locker space. There's even an outboard in here, there's some toys in here, um, tender. It's actually quite a big locker, but it's got the two doors to it. And the other thing I really like about the Manhattan 52, it's got two access points. You've got one here and the other one here. So you've got two accesses into the boat, which are identical width. So if I show you on this one, so coming up through, and I do like this gate, it's got, it's got a nice Sunseeker motif gate. I like that. So quite a nice feature. And you, I don't know if you noticed, but we're teak throughout. And also the Manhattan 52, um, you have to bear with us because obviously we're out of the water mode. So these are cushions for not only for up the bow, um, also on, on the flybridge, there's a bathing area as well. But underneath all these cushions, 
there's actually a sunbathing area on the back of the boat here as well. So from the seat here back, it's actually a, um, a really nice sunbathing area. And you can actually lift the seat backs, if I think right, you can lift these and they will slide back into a more, um, into a nicer position as well. Uh, but they will lean back so you can actually have a, a backrest there as well. Um, but as you come on, also it lends itself to rear cockpit seating. So even though we've got the bathing platform on the back, we've still got this really large cockpit area. And actually there's a really nice fold out table, which is removable. So you can actually have cockpit outside dining as well. And uh, so a really nice feature to have out here. And that just neatly folds away. Um, so the other clever thing about this area is the fact that there's actually a cabin in under here. So it's always known as a crew cabin, great storage. There's a lot of stuff in here at the moment, but we'll give you an idea. If we lift this up, there's steps down into it. There is a sink on the right hand side. There's a tender in there at the moment, of course. Um, but then there is a toilet down underneath there and then a single bed all the way across. So actually it lends itself to brilliant storage, but also it is additional bunk for somebody if needed. Um, but let's drop that back down and it neatly, the door just neatly closes and then it's completely covered up. So no one would ever know it's actually there. It's quite clever. Um, there's also neat things like you've got rope storage. So you can just, instead of taking your lines off, you can neatly just um, roll them up and put them in there. So you can keep them attached to the cleats, which makes mooring a lot easier. On this side, we've got actual, we've got buttons for the controls for the underwater lights and the hydraulic platform as well. And again, there's an additional gate on this side as well. And you can see this access is exactly the same. So you can come in either side of the boat very easily. And side access as well. We just rolled up the one cover, so we've still got all the other campers up. But look, you can easily just get down the side. And there's quite a nice freeboard on here as well to start with. And very easy just to walk all the way along. And in the summer, this is fantastic. Well, it's like the summer now, isn't it? The sun's out. I can almost pretend that instead of being November, and we've had storms all week. Um, we can actually pretend this is now the summer because we've got the big sunbathing plaid platform here. The, the sunbathing pad will go here um, that you saw on the back. Um, and, but you still have really good access to the, to the windlass. This can be controlled at either helm, but also we've got the foot buttons to control the windlass up and down as well. Um, and then a really nice walk around both sides. But also, look, we've got this mood lighting all the way around the deck, so at night, this is all lit up beautifully around the decks. Really nice feature and that travels all the way both sides. And you can see the big expanse of windscreen. So you've got the two wipers with wash as well. And you can see the horn and the spotlight. But also on top, look, we can see there's two Raymarine domes and an open array radar. So really there's, a, there's an awful lot of electronics involved with this boat as well. The electronics are, um, um, they're original but they're all in fully working order, all work really well, including autopilot as well. But what we'll do now, we'll head up to the flybridge. And I'll just show you the layout up there because it is a fantastic layout. So the mood lighting carries on up the steps and then up into the flybridge area. We've just uncovered this to do this today. Again, we've had storms all week and we've got a few trees behind us. There's a few leaves lying around, but uh, as we're going, we're trying to get them off. Um, but this is another sunbathing area. So with the pads for that, we saw at the back. So another lounger. So we've got one, two, three big open um, lounges already for the summer, as well as we've got this fantastic triple helm position up here. Um, there is storage underneath, of course for various things. Um, and then, so a really nice place to actually drive the boat from, very sheltered. Um, I've driven this boat quite a few times now. This boat handles very nicely as well um, for such a big boat, with the bow and stern thruster and the shaft drives, it really does handle well. 
and performance as well. This, is, this boat will do um, in the low 30s, so very, very good performer, and it cruises quite happily 25, 27 knots all day long. So it's a, it's a really nice, powerful engines on here, which I'll show you in a bit. We'll go in the engine room, um, which you can actually pretty much walk around in. Um, but at the helm here, this has the two man engines in. And with that, we've got obviously got the electronic controls here, which are very nice to use. They're quite, um, they're quite compact, very easy to use. Bow and stern thruster controls, not forgetting we do have the remote as well, um, as well as just the engine controls, engine displays, VHF, um, we've obviously got the um, autopilot um, and then we'll have depth and then the chart plotter. So it's an E120 and there's a matching one down below as well. And all this is repeated down below. And then we've just got our normal gauges as well. So a nice, easy layout. Everything's just to one side, which gives us plenty of room for socializing. Um, and then obviously the socializing continues into this back seating area. And, um, and for a big flybridge boat, it's got a big socializing area. This is really nice. Um, there's a table as well. Um, so there's a nice feature table. And if you can see, so it's, it's part wooden and then also got this nice marble top as well. So we can obviously anything that would mark the wood we can put on here instead. And um, this also um, folds as well. So we can make a, a bit of a bigger area for socializing and this can be just used as a drinks table or we can open it up for a diner. Um, and again, the storage in here. Um, and obviously it's just kept nice in nice condition with this lovely cover as well. Um, there are individual covers for the seating, um, which aren't on at the moment, but it does have its own covers over here as well, um, as well as it's got the full flybridge cover um, which was on here, which we obviously we've taken off to do the video today. The helm position has its own cover as well, um, which we've taken off as well. But also look, we've got a little wet bar. So we've got hot and cold water up here, and then we've got a fridge unit as well. Um, and just forgive the dampness, because it is a very damp day today. And of course, um, we've had these storms all week, so this is yet to be um, prepped for sale properly. But as you can see, we're showing you in its raw form, which is actually quite a nice thing to do. As you see a boat, as it is at the end of a season, you can actually see it's actually still really, really nice and clean, albeit it just needs a clean down. So what we'll do now is we'll head back down. I'll show you the interior, because we haven't looked at that yet. The interior is fantastic on a Manhattan 52. It's one of the best interiors in class, especially for this year range. And this year range, really, it was a bit hit or miss whether you get the full width cabin. And with this, you do. You get a really good full width cabin, which we'll show you in a minute. But first of all, we've got these beautiful doors, um, which are stainless steel racks, smoke doors, really nice mechanism to them, a really nice feature coming through into now what is the main saloon. And as you come through, with there's tons of lights above us, full of, as well as this nice curved seating area. Um, all the upholstery is in nice condition, all the carpets are in lovely condition, all the woodwork is in lovely condition. And this big table folds out and it will spin round as well for this position here. So you can have a nice um, uh, diner inside as well. And again, there's good storage in here also and um, there's additional seat just here um, and then that's access partly the um, the av section so we've got a, um, a a very modern touchscreen fusion stereo it's an ra770 i think um, and it's um, so that's got wi-fi bluetooth you can have the app on your phone really really good system um, also though um, you've got a drinks cupboard I really like Sunseeker, they really do their, their drinks cupboards well. Um, we can see we've got double access, so double cupboards. So you've got access there and then access into here. But they're all Sunseeker glasses. Look at that. And even the tumblers as well, look. they're all Sunseeker tumblers. So all the original glassware is in here as well is really nice um, but there is a trick up its sleeve for this unit and I don't know if you've spotted it but if I press this button here of course you might be wondering where the television is 
I really like the way that folds away. That's really cool, isn't it? And then we have the TV. See the Aqu Aquios TV that pops up. It's a bit slow. But while that's coming up, I hope we can see the blinds as well. So really nice blinds either side. And then with, also with the stereo system as well, if you have a look over there, there's a Bose system and a Skybox as well. So you've got the satellite dish built up in one of the domes. There we go, so there's your TV now. Our Bose system, Bose speakers all around. So a really, really good sound system. And also, this boat has fitted with reverse cycle air conditioning. So there are air conditioning units around. There's three fitted to this boat. And, um, and really, it works really well. We use it in the summer. And during this massive heat wave as well, um, a lot of people now, for a boat of this type and a boat of this size, um, people are really looking for air conditioning and this has it. So it's reverse cycle air conditioning, it will cool and heat. Really good system and works really well. Um, but also in the summer, you might find, you might want to make yourself some ice. So there's actually an ice maker as well. Uh, really nice condition, uh, works well. Um, and so that's, that's a really good feature you don't get in all of them. Um, and also the Manhattan 52, if you look in between a Manhattan 52 and a 50, um, one of the differences is the bathing area on the back. Um, also though, it's this extra seating as well. So this the extra few feet gives you this extra seating. So two more forward facing seats. So if you are traveling down below, which is actually a really nice place, I've actually bought this up because it was quite, um, um, it was quite a stormy, wet day when I bought this up. I actually drove it from the lower helm um, and um, the person who helped me bring the boat up, she actually sat here. And again, you get a lovely vista from here um, as well as over at the helm seat. And the helm, I really like the way it wraps everything around you. Um, you really feel like you're in control here. Um, again, we've got an E120, the same instrumentation as up above, except we've got an extra one of these, so we can choose boat speed um, and um, um, trip on there, as well as the VHF. Um, bow and stern controls as well, but as you can see, here's the remote. So we've got the remote control for the side power bow and stern thruster. So this allows you to control the bow the stern or both together, um, which really helps if you're mooring and you just want to leave the helm, go and help with the mooring lines, you can actually use both thrusters just to hold the boat against the pontoon. Um, so the wind doesn't affect you tying up. It's just a really nice feature if you're short-handed or even single-handed. Um, I, I have single-handed this as well. Um, so I have managed to single-hand this boat in relatively high winds myself. Um, so tying on, untying the lines, getting the lines on, getting the fence on, doing everything myself and um, using that remote control really, really does make the difference. Um, but also we've got obviously the, the normal controls still down here. I really like the Sunseeker wheels, they're a nice feature. Um, but also we've got power windows as well. So really nice for a bit of air, but also to be able to talk to people walking around the decks. Um, so a nice feature with the electric window. Um, but as we leave here, um, we can now see the carpet sort of changes to wood. And we've got this lovely stainless railing. And this is, uh, really just gives this a real high-end feel now. We're really getting into the good quality materials that Sunseeker used at the time. Um, the sort of satin wood finish. It's not a high gloss finish, it's a satin wood finish, um, which for its time was quite unusual. A lot of people still went for the gloss, but the satin wood now is preferred by a lot of people, it's just a bit more subtle, but just feels that bit more quality. Um, and you can see it's just, we're now down into the galley area. Um, and we've got these lovely white sort of marble effect tops. Um, we've got a waste bin in there, and then just storage. This is all storage along here. Um, all the doors open nicely, they're all. Um, and then we've got a, um, a nice um, Plastimo um, hob, so a three burn electric hob on here. Um, and this can be used um, offshore as well as in inshore because this 
boat's actually fitted with a generator. So the, um, um, it's, I think it's a nine kilowatt generator, we'll confirm that on the advert. Um, but that's big enough to run the air conditioning. Um, it's big enough to be able to run all the electrics on the boat as if you're plugged into shore power. So the generator is a really must feature on a boat like this as well. Because when you're at anchor, you still want the aircon working. You still want to do everything you want to do when you're in a marina and you can do it on this boat with the use of the generator. It's a really good feature. Um, we also have a, a combi oven as well. So it's convection oven and microwave. Um, and then if you pop down, Um, we've got a proper, proper fridge um, and uh, freezer. So a proper size fridge freezer in here. Um, under the floor, you've got access to seacocks. Um, the other thing I'll say as well is all the seacocks, the skin fittings throughout, so that is ones for the heads, that's ones for the engines, that's ones for the generator, um, that's also ones for the, um, the heads in the crew cabin. They were all renewed um, two and a half, three seasons ago. I think two seasons, if I remember correctly. Um, so two or three years ago, they were all replaced, um, which is another thing when boats get to a certain age, they need to be done. Just through galvanic corrosion, normal corrosion, they need to be done. They weren't really bad, um, but they were just due to be done. So the owner wanted it to be done. Um, so we did that, I think at the same time we did, we epoxied it as well. So um, that was all done at that time. Um, so a really, again, a really good benefit um, to the boat. Um, also though, let's walk our way through. I actually like this. I like the way they cut in the drainers and obviously we've got the sink as well and the drainers and then there's just cupboards everywhere for storage. So loads of storage in this galley. And then we go through to the, to the main guest cabin. And the main guest cabin, really nice island bed. And uh, like I say, I'm six foot, but very comfortable. I'm sort of lost on this bed a little bit. Um, TV as well. So a nice television, loads of storage again, loads of storage. And, and also uh, quite a big wardrobe as well. In, oh, it's a big wardrobe. I don't know if you can, you can get in there. Let's shut this door. That's a big water, isn't it? Okay, I can get in there. I'm gonna get in there. Look, how big this wardrobe is. Look, I can get in here. Look, I can hide in this wardrobe. <laughs> it's massive. That's one of the biggest wardrobes I've seen. So yeah, proper full height, obviously, wardrobe, since I can get in there. Um, and which, so I've got the camera in here because obviously we've got door now to the ensuite. So the main head has an also, oh, there is a box in here with some booze in it, so that doesn't, I don't think that goes with the boat either, unless uh, you know, we could negotiate it in, I'm guessing. Um, but um, we've got a full size shower with hard cubicles, so it's not a curtain or anything like that. It's a proper, um, where do we take that off? It's this side, there we go. So a proper cubicle. I've got a similar in my own boat, they work really well. And again, look, I'm six foot, look at the head height loads and loads of head height in here um, and really nice um, sink um, on top obviously of a pedestal so I really like this sort of marble effect it's kind of got a bit of um, bronze sort of flecking in it into a dark marble fleck top so really nice feature um, and then um, we've got electric point and also um, it tells you um, with the holding tank level so this has holding tank as well these are vacuum flush toilets um, let me just Steal it off you for a sec, I don't think we'll both fit in here. Um, but we can get an idea actually, apart from the shower and the sink, they've got the toilet. So it's a vacuum flush toilet. So you basically put your foot on there and it will rinse with fresh. And if you push it all the way down, it will then um, vacuum out um, any of the waste. Um, but even in here, look, we've got this top again. You can actually see the flecking, it's really beautiful. Um, really big um, porthole. Um, it does have blinds as well. All the blinds are ocean air blinds and they have these bars that stop the blinds from swinging around. Um, and there's a vent in here as well for the heating. And of course we've got storage cupboards and mirrors as well. Um, and obviously we've got the shower with the controls as well in here. So really nice, there's another mirror. And then I think, I won't go back into that cabin, I'll come back out 
the second door, which then brings us back into the galley. Just give you an idea of the layout. And then I'll hand back to you, there we go. And then of course we come through and then we've got the second cabin, which is a bunk. So this also has a television in as well, and it has a double bunk. Um, what I'll do is, a lot of people worry that the bunks are just for children. I mean, they are single beds, but it's actually quite a wide single bed. If I'll lie on it, again, I'm six foot, got my legs out stretched, and there's still a good few inches on here. If I go right over to the side, you can see actually, it's quite a big bed. Um, the bed, this one as well, is the same width, but because of the, the angle of the hull, it actually is offset slightly. So you get a bit more room to get in and out the bunk, but cleverly this bunk's been moved over by this much because of the shape of the hull. Um, so this top one is just as wide and just as long. Um, so actually, I'd quite happily sleep here. It's actually a nice, it's a nice uh, comfortable bed. Okay, and even this one has a, um, has storage as well, so cupboards and drawers, and it has two more drawers this side and another big wardrobe of similar size to the other one as well. And it has a full length mirror as well. So it really is a nice guest cabin if you get over the fact it's bunk beds, um, but actually it's quite nice. Um, as we come down here though, we've got a couple more steps. We're back to carpet, as you can see from the wood floor. Um, there's a large storage cupboard in here. You can see that so it's big and get a lot in there. Um, but above is all the distribution panel. So in here, we've got all your mains electric and we can actually show you it's on mains at the minute. Um, and then we have a mix of um, 24 volt system and also 12 volt system. Um, so um, the system works 12 volt and then 24 volt. So you can see 24 volt now, 24 volt, 24 volt domestic, and then 12 volt domestic. So your 12 volt systems are things for like the VHF, um, the radio, the television amplifier, reading lights, 12 volt sockets. So not an awful lot there, um, but, also, but 24 volt is the main domestic supply which does everything else. And then the 230 volt, so 240 volt, your mains um, does anything it needs mains from um, your main three pin sockets to the microwave. Um, but again, this all works as well once you've run the generator and your generator control is here. So you can start and stop the generator from here, and then that'll turn on all this section when you're not in shore power. Um, when all the battery switches are on, you can see all the green lights are on. And so if any battery switches are on, they'll be off. And also the toilet holding tank system um, actually operates from here. So you can actually pump out the holding tank from this point. Um, so it'll tell you if it's, um, if it's starting to get full, so three quarters full and then full, so it'll warn you that it's getting full. Um, and then you need to open the seacock. So this lot will come on once you open the seacock. Um, and then when you're ready to then discharge, you press the button, the pump running light will come on um, and then it will discharge the holding tank. And of course, remember that's, that um, needs to be done when you're offshore, uh, normally over three miles offshore. Um, but there are local restrictions for that. Ideally, you'd get it sucked out in a, um, in a pump out station as well, which you do have that facility as well. But now, the piece de resistance, the best thing about this boat for its age is the main stateroom, the full width, the full beam cabin. And a lot of boats in this sort of era, this cabin was still slightly restricted. Um, you, you know, it wasn't easy to get around both sides of the bed. Um, but as you can see on this one, I'm still standing fully up. So easy again down. It's a proper square bed as well. And as you can see, oh, not even halfway up, am I? As you can see, a massive bed as well. So a really, really nice size bed. There's even a really nice vanity seat and a vanity area here. Um, loads of storage again. And so you've got storage cupboards. It's got its own Bose stereo system here. And it's even got a safe as well with a code on it. I've told you what a safe is now. Um, we've got obviously three pin plugs, but just really nice expanse of wood, um, really nice feature. But instead of um, blinds, um, um, what do they call the, the other blinds? So we see yeah, this, the slatted, the slatted, the Venetian blinds. 
but it's got a different type of blind now. <laughs> and, um, and this one is, you can see, it's a really nice quality uh, metallic effect um, on here. So again, it just softens the area from just having normal, um, just having normal blinds like in the saloon. Um, it just softens the area, makes it feel really nice. And of course, you've got these large windows. The center one's opening, so you can have ventilation, um, but it's a really nice outlook because you're quite close to the water line, looking out of here when you're on the water. Of course, now we're looking at the bottom of a hull on a yacht, so it's not quite the same, um, but when you're in here with the water lapping around, it's lovely and it's lovely. Um, and then if you walk around to the other side, um, again, you've got good access to the bed, and again, you've got the same um, window as well. So you've got the three windows again, another large expanse on here and the same blind as well. And again, the center window is opening. So you can have that either side. You can shut the blinds down, of course, for privacy. Um, but otherwise, it's such a lovely view out there. Um, and it has its own heads as well. And again, it's a nice private um, shower room as well. So it's got the same shower, even as a small um, um, a, a small, I wouldn't call it a seat, it's somewhere you can put your, your shower gel and everything like that on as well, which is quite nice in the shower. Same sink arrangement, but it's still got all these lovely marble touches to it. It's this marble effect here. Um, nice basin again, storage, and of course the toilet again as well. And this wooden floor is nice as well. So again, another nice, and another nice heads, I like that. Right, there is um, storage under the bed. Um, so there's a couple of drawers that come out, which is quite nice. Um, and then we've got some of the ownership paperwork in there as well. So all the manuals for a lot of the systems. There you go, so there's a lot of manuals, including the original Sunseekers owner's manual there, which is quite nice. So he's got a lot of the original, um, still everything that goes with it. And then we've got these two massive wardrobes. So, um, we can see the owner also in the winter puts out sort of tube heaters and things like that. So it's not quite cold enough yet. We've had quite a mild last couple of weeks, even though it's been stormy. But again, look, it's a massive um, um, wardrobe, double wardrobe as well. So there's plenty of places to put your clothes, plenty of hanging storage. There's plenty of additional storage. So you'd be hard pushed for this boat to look messy because you can squirrel everything away. Um, so as we come up, you get an idea of the layout. So up, back up to the galley. And then we'll go all the way back up, up the stairs, back into the main saloon. I'm trying to remember if there's anything that I've missed. I don't think so. But everything's in lovely condition. So even things like the headlinings are in nice shape. There's no sagging of headlinings. Um, there's no water stains, there's just nothing. I really love though these big windows. When you sat in the saloon, quite often when you're in, sat in the flybridge, you kind of slightly, um, and you feel like you, you're enclosed away from the outside world. But once you open up these blinds, uh, it's a massive window. It really floods the room with light and it's just a massive area. So really nice. And then you've got the same the other side as well. Um, so as we come back out, I'm going to put my shoes on now because we're going to head down under here to the engine room. i put the lights on. So it has lights down here. I'm actually standing up fully now. And um, um, one nice feature is actually a water supply. So there's actually a water supply on a hose here in case you need to rinse anything down. Um, batteries are fitted underneath here, but you've got a nice ladder that comes down. Um, I suppose it'd be best if I take this. Um, first thing I'll show you is the ladder coming down. Batteries are fitted under here. Um, and then we've got quite a lot of trip switches. We've got the side power controls. So the emergency offs if we need to turn them off. And if they trip, you come back down here and turn them back on again. And then we've got these fantastic man engines. And you've got these fantastic man 
six cylinder, uh, around 1800, um, 800 horsepower each turbocharged engines. Um, with the great exhaust system, look at that, out into these massive exhaust mufflers that go through then out. Um, big water tank, fuel tank as well. And then round, we can see the other one as well. And then we can also see the capacity, 282 gallons a side. And then of course we've got an additional water tank as well. And then um, we've got things like the Seacox, uh, so the engine Seacox, and we've got other Seacox for the generator. Um, we've got the water strainers as well. And also I've just got the cover down for the generator. So the generator's here, you can kind of see it's in a nice shape inside. And it's done 556 hours. And you can see it's a Kohler generator. And then it's 11 kilowatt. So there we go, confirm. It's an 11 kilowatt generator, so a bit bigger than I thought, which will then cope with everything that gets thrown at it. Um, and then we've got other controls for the hydraulics for the bathing platform. And of course we've got these lights. You can, which I've done many a time, can climb over the generator and it accesses the rear section um, where you can get to the rudder stocks and things like that. You can also access all that area through the uh, crew cabin. Um, but I really love these engines, they're really easy. Quite a nice feature on these as well, oil changes. They've actually got their own pump to do the oil changes. Um, so there's a pump there, um, and then there's also a lever up here, um, which is in the off position, but you can actually change it. If you want to pump out the engine oil, you turn it one way, and if you want to pump out the gear oil, you turn it the other way. And the electric pump, simply, you put into a container, and then it will just press the button on the top, and it will pump the oil out into the container. It's a really nice, easy way to service, um, as well as the oil filters are easy to change, um, and the impellers um, are fairly good access as well. Um, these impellers um, have just been um, changed last year, and the, um, both the seals in them as well were changed. So they do have um, carbon seals, and they were changed as well in this last year. Um, so again, everything down here is in really good shape and these engines do run beautifully and pretty bulletproof as well. So let's turn the lights out. Thank you. And then we'll head back up and I'll put you back to our cameraman. Thank you. Um, and put back up. And so I think that's probably about it with the Sunseeker Manhattan 52, 2007 model. Um, fantastic shape. It's really hard to beat this one. Um, for its age, for the condition it's in, it really feels like a five-year-old boat. Really, really smart. So if you want to come and see this boat, see how much it is, come and visit us at parker-adams.co.uk. Um, if you want to come and view this boat, it is out the water now for the next few months at Hamble Point Marina in Hamble. So please get in touch, subscribe to our channel, come and look at the other videos we have to offer. We've got over about 150 videos now that we've done on all sorts of different boats. So please come and see us. And I hope you enjoyed this one. I don't think I've forgotten anything, but if I have, I'll let you know. But otherwise, thanks again and see you on the next one.